Welcome to this behind the scenes look at how we put on a show at the Unicorn. My name's Puni Morell and I'm the artistic director of the Unicorn, which means I run the whole building and I choose which shows we do. I'm also the director of this year's production of Baddies and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we made Baddies and what that means is how we got from this, which is our script, to this, which is the show you're going to see. Quite often what happens first is that somebody will have an idea for a play that they want to write. In this case, the composer, Mark, had an idea for a story about the villains from fairy tales. He brought me the story that he thought he wanted to write about and asked me if I could think of anybody who would be good at writing the words. So I introduced him to somebody called Nancy Harris and they got along and they went away and started writing about two and a half or three years ago. And that's where the whole process started. So Baddies is a really unusual project because I'm a writer and normally I write things on my own, in my room, or I adapt things from books. But Baddies uh, was a totally unusual project because it's a musical. So it wasn't about just me on my own. I had to always work with the composer. Myself and Mark sort of worked through the story together before I ever wrote a word of the script. Once I get the script that they've written, uh, I look at how we might cast it and we think about which actors would be the right people for the parts. And we also look at whether or not the script works, by which I mean whether it's too long or whether there's parts that they think are funny but they're maybe not as funny as they should be. Or we look at whether the songs are in the right place and whether we've got the right songs for the right characters. You usually have a process called drafting, which is when you rewrite uh, the play. And, and what that means is that you're always trying to make it better. When you want to make a play, everything has to make sense, otherwise the audience is kind of going, well, what's that about? So you have to think about what every character wants, what every character needs, the things that the characters find it easy to say, the things the characters find that they don't want to say. So in the redrafting process, you look at it and you think, well, why is that person doing that? Maybe there should be more of a reason, or maybe they shouldn't do that. Or you ask a lot of questions. So in rewriting the play, you actually end up uh, making more sense out of things. Once we have the script that we want to use and we know that it's ready, I look for a designer who's going to be in charge of how everything's going to look on stage. When we start a show, we don't have a clear idea what the show will look like. We talk first of all about what kind of atmosphere we want the play to have. We just assemble lots and lots of visuals um, that will help us make decisions on what the show might look like. Then once we've got research, we start to do something which is called a sketch model. A sketch model is, is, the, is the first visual way of looking at what a set might look like in a space. Uh, then I go away from doing that and I, I start, and different designers have different methods, but my, my thing that I like to do is then I like to start hand drawing all the um, technical drawings. And then from the technical drawings, um, I start to build the uh, a white card model. So in the early stages of a production, we start with um, what we call the white card model. Um, and it is at that stage that the set designer specifically will introduce their ideas and where they see the production going. It's um, a way of getting the structure and the look of the design together before I do any paint finishes. Because what has to happen is Phil, who's the production manager here, he has to then price up and make sure we can afford it. The designer and I sit down and we look at the practicalities of what things can be made of, what materials we might use, what kind of finish we might be looking for. The parts of the set will be constructed in wood, some of it's welded together, then you have a whole scenic artistry team who do all the paintwork, then electricians will get involved if there's electrics involved in the set. Uh, there's lots of problem solving that still needs to happen after the set is being designed. And then we start thinking about the costumes that the actors would wear and what sorts of shops they would, if they were real people, what sort of shop they would go and buy their clothes in. 
This obviously is something I do parallel to the set design. I'm always thinking about it as I go along at the same time, but I won't actually put pen to paper until after I've done, I've created the world. It's almost like you create the world and then you, then you inhabit it. You understood fashion has rules. The world would look so much less rubbish if they taught being gorgeous at school. And then, when that's all done, we start having production meetings where everybody else who works in the building, so the technical department and the administration team, start costing up how everything's going to work and we make sure that we can afford it and build it in time. Um, and it is that time which is crucial to work with the creative team, so lighting designer, set designer, costume supervisor, to look at um, what the vision is as a whole and then kind of work collaboratively to achieve that vision within the parameters that we've been set, which mainly is the, the budget. So I'm Dean Nolan, uh, I play the big bad wolf, uh, obviously. Um, my name's Leela Clements and in Baddies I'm playing a guard. Uh, my name is Marja Keeney, I'm currently in Baddies the Musical and I'm playing uh, Captain Hook. On the first day of rehearsals we get everybody together and first we read through the whole script with the songs. I'm supposed to bully people smaller and sweeter and more defenceless than me. That's my role. There's a villain. Well, it doesn't sound very good. Give it time. It gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then we spend maybe a week teaching the actors the songs. Bad guys. 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 You will sing the whole line. Right. Yeah? So from the top. Right. We've sung all the songs lots of times. And actually, once you start doing that every day, you don't realise how much is actually in your brain. Repetition is good because you get a chance to do it again and potentially add something new to it, add something different, or just hone the skill or the, the objective you're trying to aim for. And then we spend the second week probably uh, doing what we call blocking, which is a theatre word for deciding where people are going to stand and where they're going to come on and off and if they're going to move any furniture where it's going to go. And then we would start running the play from beginning to end so that we can get a sense of the shape of it, which bits need to go faster, which bits need to go slower, whether it's funny enough and so on. Obviously rehearsing is brilliant. Just the creative process of seeing everything come together and trying out ideas. Bring choices to the room, have fun, play around. It's not about trying to get it right, it's about trying different ideas that we might throw away so that in the end we end up with an idea we don't want to throw away and that's when we know we've got the right idea. After the rehearsals there are then three more things we have to do before we're ready for opening night. The first one is called the technical rehearsal and that's usually uh, three days of rehearsals that we do in the theatre itself. It's where we take what the actors have been doing in the rehearsal room and add all the scenery, light, sound and other technical elements. These are all things that the actors have not had to work with uh, on that particular production until this point. It's where we work out what all the technicians are going to do, if there's pieces of scenery that move, when they're going to move and how quickly and it's a chance for the actors to learn. Um, how to move all the big pieces of furniture that they're dealing with as well. And then you have like a wonderful transition. Tech is my definitely my favourite part of the job. Who's he? Name's Pat. Peter Pat. Okay, hold that. Dean, I want to try something else. I'm going to shorten the music. And I'd like you to say who's that under the music. Okay. Name's Pat. That's much better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after three days of this technical rehearsal, we then do what's called a dress rehearsal, which is where we practice doing the whole play exactly as we're going to do it, from beginning to end, without stopping. 
And we usually do two of those. The first one, everybody's usually very, very nervous and they can't remember anything and everybody panics that the show's going to be terrible. But by the second one, usually they've uh, remembered everything that they le- did in rehearsal and in the technical rehearsal. And you can start to see the show coming together. Bad guys are out of business. Bad guys are out of luck. Bad guys are so lost season. Bad guys who truly suck. Bad guys are out of business. Bad guys are so passive. Bad guys. And then after the dress rehearsal, the next thing we need is you. So we do usually a week, maybe six or seven performances called previews before we have our big opening night. And the previews are really a chance to see whether the things that we've been doing in rehearsal work when the audience gets there, whether you think our jokes are funny and whether you think the play is interesting and whether you like what we do. You never feel 100% confident that you everything's done is going to be perfect and it's going to work. What all of us who make the show really want is that you're going to like it. And we won't know until you've watched it whether you do. There might be a scene that just after putting in front of an audience, we just go, wow, that doesn't work. Re- reconfigure it. What you have on the first day of preview will not be what you are showing in press night because the other half of the chemistry comes from the audience and we don't know until we get them. I think the things you need to be a good director are patience and a sense of humour because things go wrong all the time and unless you find it funny, you'll just get miserable. If you're the kind of person who loves hearing stories, or if you're the kind of person who likes telling stories, that's all you need to be a writer, because all you need to be a writer is have an imagination. You know, just a willingness to play and not be afraid of being silly or being looked at and being judged. You have to believe it's going to be okay in the end, and you have to convince everybody else it's going to be okay in the end. And if you can do that, and you can make sure everybody has a nice time while also working really hard, then the chances are you're going to be a good director. I really enjoy what I do because every show is different. Uh, every show offers new challenges and is always a learning curve. You get to meet people from so many different backgrounds, you get to work with some incredible people. The team aspect of theatre is, is really, 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 really important. If you think about yourself as an individual working on your own, you're just never going to be able to create that big picture. So I like the versatility of being an actor. I really, really love my job and feel very blessed and lucky to be able to be working in it at the moment. In front of a live audience, there's, there's nothing better. And, and getting that reaction and, and um, response to moments or to hear that applause, hopefully, um, at the end of a show is, is really, really quite special. Down to the ground. I can huff and I can 